In this case, I've added my first window. And keep in mind, this is an inexpensive carry-on trailer. So the things that I put on here are gonna match the trailer. This is not the best quality build and it is an old trailer. So these are windows, sliding windows that I picked up. I'll be putting one on this side and two on the other side. I uh, picked them up on Amazon. They, it is tempered glass. I'm going to tint them, but they were about 30 bucks each as opposed to about 300 each for the RV style windows. And I will show you how I wound up putting them in. Uh, this is an inside look of a the first installed window on the uh, passenger side. And it's an 18 by 27. So they're 18 inches wide by 27 tall. I installed it between two of my studs, which are not real studs. They are Z posts, Z, Z channel. And so they're not real box tubing. That's why I'm just decided to go ahead with the cheap windows rather than spend money on the good stuff. The first step for me <clears throat> installing these windows would be to find the place that I want to install it between the studs. So I'm going to lay out my next window which will be right there that is directly across from this window and this is going to be our bed area and we'll have good cross ventilation uh, in the bed area for when we sleep at night. I'm also going to put a window up here in the front. This is more towards the kitchen area. The window up here will pro provide good cross ventilation to the door, which is on the other side. Now you can see my layout here. My windows are 18 wide and 27 tall. So what I've done is laid out a rectangle. Since I've removed the interior, I can do it from the out inside going out. And so my lines are 18 and a little about 18 and a quarter wide and 27 and a quarter tall. They're in between the studs. I laid out this window and this window at the same time. I might as well do them both since I've already got the measuring equipment out and laying them out. I got to show you on the outside why they're positioned. I've positioned them three inches from this top rail here and pretty evenly spaced between the studs but I got to show you on the outside why it was there. I have on the outside of this a rain gutter here and so I will position outside the trim and everything will be about an inch and a half from the rain gutter. You have to watch out for the rain gutter. The, the 18 by 27 <clears throat> it does not include the mounting flange, the trim. And as you can see on this one, it got, the trim got pretty close to the rain gutter, about a half an inch away there, right? So this trim sticks out further than the 18 by 27. And when you position the window, you need to be aware of that extra size. Now for screws here, and I'll show you later on, but these screws, I don't know, I, I think I got them for like um, uh, a carport or something like that, working with metal, and they all have grommets. They're self-tapping screws and they all have a rubber grommet on them. And they happen to be already painted white. So I think that's what, I think it was a good matchup for that. I just happen to have the screws and I'll probably have to get some more for the, to finish the installation with the other two windows. All right, on to cutting holes. This is the tool that I'm going to use to cut the rectangles with, and I'm using some Bosch blades. It's got a very, very, very fine blade made for cutting sheet aluminum. Bought these at Lowe's. I think it was five for five bucks or something like that on sale. So in order to cut the rectangle, and first you have to have a pilot hole for it that the saw blade can fit into. So I took my drill bit and I drilled in like a 3 8 hole in each corner to get started. Also, when I cut with the saw blade, I'm gonna cut the most floppy part first because that's going to flop. If I leave it last, it's going to really, really give me some vibration problems. 
I'm gonna go outside and look at the layout of the four holes. The four holes tell me where the rectangle is going to wind up. <clears throat> so you can see the hole here, right there. There's a hole. And then you can go up there and see where the holes are going to be there. They are about two inches from the rain gutter. So the rain gutter here is uh, hanging a little bit lower than that cross beam inside, that, that header inside. There's the piece, I've cut it out. There's the first hole, I'm gonna cut the other hole. I will tell you some things that might help you. It gets very, very loud in here when you're cutting, so if you're noise sensitive, you probably wanna wear some hearing protection because of the vibration. I also wear leather gloves to protect my hands, and I also have some impact resistant glasses on to protect my eyesight. I'm cutting it from the inside out, so I'm not getting any scratches like that on the outside surface. So we'll go around and look at the outside. <clears throat> and you'll see what I'm talking about. I've got nice clean cuts, a little extra aluminum. Stick it out here, pull that off. All right. Got nice clean cuts and we can clean the surface and fit the window and put the mastic on and screw the window in. But before I screw the window in, I do want to provide some sort of wood framing. And that's what this is right here. Is some little uh, I don't know, one by three wood framing that I put around the window for the screws to bite into. It's attached to the the uh, studs so it gives some some strength and rigidity to the uh, mounting of the window. Sometimes when you cut, make a cut, it doesn't clear, the corners don't clear out like you would like. And so, like this right here is pretty nasty looking. And this corner right here is not real quite right. And so, I have some tin snips that I've had for a while. And, and those can be used to clear the corners up and clear everything up. All right, now I've got the hole cut. And I'm going to test put the windows. This is the window. It's got the latches on the inside, the screen is on the outside. So I'm going to go outside the trailer and test fit to see whether the hole is accurate. The hole looks really good. Now it's time to put the framing around it so that we can put the window in. All right, you can see where I've got some of the framing in. And we're gonna get the rest of the framing in, put the mastic on the outside and screw the window in. We're almost done with it. This is the ceiling tape that we use. It's butyl ceiling tape. It provides, it's made for this water air airtight ceiling, weatherproof. I call it mastic sometimes, but that's what it amounts to is it's butyl ceiling tape. I used this on my re resealing the windows on my cargo, my camper shelf of my truck. So I had that left over, plus I bought a new roll, three quarter inch by 30 foot off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the video, in the, in the comments below. Now I've got the mastic on. Sorry for the noise, the wind, and then my neighbors decided to bless me with his lawn mowing. But you can see I've got the butyl tape all the way around it. Now I start at the bottom and go up. Any seams or any splits you want at the bottom because if you have it at the top, it's going to leak from the top down. If you have it at the bottom, the chances are it's not going to go up. So you want all your splits and your overlaps, anything else to be at the bottom if at all possible. I installed the window with one screw at the bottom, one screw at the top. I want to go inside, I want to check for all of my alignment. I've got one more chance to make sure everything is right. This stuff is really sticky and once you get it on there, it's done. So you can see how everything's put together and going. 
Now, I haven't got this part screwed in yet. I'm going to get it finalized to uh, miss the screw. But you can see how everything's squared up. Everything's looking good on the inside and the outside. So it's time to put all the screws on. Each window is taking 24 screws. And there you have a window that is installed. Final installation there. Still got to do the other one down here. And I'm probably going to have to make a store run to get some more screws. I think I've got about half as many screws as I need. Well, I started out with the white screws and uh, I didn't have enough of them. I've got about 12 and I need 24. And so they're white with a rubber seal on the bottom. They're used for uh, attaching corrugated tin to a metal beam on a driveway or a carport or something like that. So I went to the big box store. I got some replacements. They're nine, number nine by one inch long. The issue is that mine are not, the new ones are not white. Man, you can see what I did to my finger. Isn't that a pretty thing? But that's, that's a few days old there. But anyway, these, these screws are not white like the uh, other ones are. But after I put them in, I could put a little touch up white paint on them, it'll be all right. You can get these screws, I think it was 120 of them. And that was the smallest quantity I could get. But 120 of them was about 10 bucks. And they're in a little nice little tub that dispenses and it seals back up and all that. As you can see, all three windows installed, sealed up, ready to go. I'll show you these outside screws. I'll show you what I was talking about with the screws not being white. Here's the ones that are not white. And I'll have to touch them up. You can see the contrast between the two right there. So it won't be a hard touch up. As far as the black, rubber sticking out and we'll give it a few days it can trim it with a razor blade and clean it up with some mineral spirits it'll wipe it right off so that it looks like a neater installation all done 